Hey, what is up guys, Bollins here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the best free DAWs in 2020. It's only July of this year, and we've already had two new free DAWs come out this year. Those being Serato Studio and MPC Beats. I'm gonna be talking about the pros and cons of each of these softwares, and I'm also going to be ranking them, like what's the best DAW and what's the worst DAW. And I'm just really trying to give you a good idea of what you need to start actually making your beats. Okay, so I wanna make a quick disclaimer. I use Cakewalk at BandLab. That is the DAW that I use, and I absolutely love using. So I'm gonna do my best to be as objective as possible, and I'm gonna try my best to put no bias in this kind of thing. Let's just get into it. Woo! Now I'm going to talk about this DAW called Waveform because I think that a lot of you actually could be interested about this DAW. The first pro on this list is that it's so, so easy to start using. Um, literally, like you just open it up and it starts working. There's also a lot of videos helping you through if you have any problems. They also have some good MIDI effects here. So if we actually open up the MIDI view, you have all of these little like tools down here. They have this line tool. You basically do the same thing as the draw tool in Cakewalk. You can also do transposing on your stuff. You can do quantizing on your stuff. You can add grooves to your stuff. You can add chords to your stuff. It definitely comes with quite a few effects plugins. It has a volume. It has an EQ. It has a reverb delay chorus and all of them really sound really good they also they also have a couple of instrument kind of plugins there was one instrument in there i thought that i thought sounded really good um but most of the other ones are just they're, they're kind of average i also think that the audio transposing here is super easy we've played before That's what it sounded like before. And then we can also, and then we can just transfer this up by like six, for example. It takes a little while to process, but then. It sounds a little bit lower quality, but it does, it does still sound good. Personally, for some cons, I think the workflow around making MIDI tracks is a little bit weird. Um, basically, if you hit T on your keyboard, you make a new track. And then you have to hit this little plus sign up here. And then drag a plugin on here. And then make sure you choose an instrument plugin. And then after you have a plugin loaded, then it becomes a MIDI track. I think it's a lot of buttons, but eventually you just get used to it, so it's not a big deal. And lastly, for one other con is they don't have a very good step sequencer. Waveform, in my opinion, is most closely related to Cakewalk, but I really like it because it has absolutely no limitations and it has a lot of really good features. So for example, for example, they have their MIDI view. If you hit the T on your keyboard, you can use your tools. Get this draw tool out. Um, a lot of DAWs don't have this draw tool and it's super duper handy. I also think that Cakewalk has a lot of um, really easy shortcuts. Uh, I'm sure other DAWs have shortcuts too. Um, personally, I'm a really big fan of these shortcuts in here. Cakewalk also has a lot of really good effect plugins. Um, basically, if you're on a track and you hit this little um, pro channel button up here, you can actually open up the pro channel, which is a compressor, an EQ, a tube distortion, a console emulator. And then if you go hit Alt 2 on your keyboard, you can op open up the mixer view. And you can also get the pro channel over here too. So if you want to add like a high pass or some EQs and stuff like that, and it's super duper quick and easy. Cakewalk also has this little step sequence in here, and it's really handy. Um, you can also do like a fill every two. Um, it's super duper handy. It's exactly what you need. Here's one thing that people don't really realize that they need until they need it. Um, Cake has a really good Reddit server. Um, you can go into the Cake Reddit server and they have several thousand people and you can just ask questions and they'll answer. It's really, really handy. Cakewalk is updated like every two weeks or three weeks or so. And they recently added this new feature called the arranging tool. So if you add a section up here and let's call this one like the verse. And then we also add another section in over here called drop. So for example, I can do this and then hit the arranging tool and then it and then it actually just arranges your thing out. It's a simple arrangement, but of course, if you're using like loop based things, um, this will be really handy for making a full beat. I also really like the user interface of this DAW, um, but that's just personal preference. Some cons of this DAW is that it is very hard to set up. I feel like if you don't really know what you're doing, it could literally take you several days to get the audio drivers and stuff like that working. Um, but there are plenty of YouTube videos out there, so you can actually figure it out using YouTube videos. Cakewalk also doesn't have a built-in sampler, which is a really big pain, um, especially for a beginner, but you can actually just download samplers, and I have a couple of videos in the corner showing you how to do that. Now this DAW is MPC Beats, and it literally just came out like 12 days ago or something like that, so it's really, really, really new. And I want to quick mention that this is really like kind of made for beat makers. There are definitely Definitely pros as well as cons in this DAW, but I really want to make sure that you know that this is for beat makers. The first pro I say is that they actually have a draw tool in here, um, it's something that a couple other DAWs have, but not very many of them have it. So this is a really good tool to have. One thing that is really, really interesting is that this DAW has a really, really powerful sampler. Um, if you don't already know, Akai actually made the MPC hardware drum machine, and that drum machine actually made people be creative enough to figure out how to use samples to make a new genre called hip hop. And another pro is that you can actually use MPC beats inside of other DAWs. So you can actually take the DAW that you use. And you can actually open up MPC Beats as if it was a plugin, and then you can actually use that sampler inside of your DAW. One con is that I heard that MPC Beats is very, very buggy if you put it into Cakewalk, um, but other DAWs, I have videos linked in the description showing you how it can work in other DAWs. Another pro of MPC Beats is that they have tons and tons and tons of built-in sounds, and all of them sound really, really good. There's a couple expansion packs that come stock with MPC Beats, um, but also they have great like sound selection over here, like synths, leads, plucks, pads, bass, organ, 
melody sounds that sound good. They have tons of different drum sounds that sound really good. They have lots of different samples that you can try out. Now there's a little bit of caveat there because NBC Beats only has eight tracks. Also a couple other pros, they have a really good audio transpose feature. I really like it. It's definitely a big con in my opinion. There are so, so many buttons. Like there are so many tabs. I don't even understand them all. As you can see, I made a relatively simple kind of beat over here. Um, it sounds pretty nice in my opinion, but it just really, it was really kind of clunky to work with because there's so many buttons in here that I don't understand how they work. Although I think this DAW works great right out of the box. Um, I do think that it is very, very complicated for a beginner to understand how to use this DAW and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Just like how NBC got really well known for its sampler, um, LMMS has gotten really, really well known for being a good free DAW. I think it's especially known because it's very, very, very similar to FL Studio, but really this seems like a really stripped down version of FL Studio. I'm going to actually start with the cons on this one because I don't think it's a very good DAW. I really just don't like this user interface where it has a whole bunch of separate windows. Another con is when you actually want to load in a VST, you have to use this like VStage plugin and then you have to go through your files and you have to find the DLL file, which is just a serious, serious pain. Like, like they really need to work on fixing that. I have a couple gripes with the MIDI view is that you can actually use a draw tool so you can't actually place notes fast. And also the looping feature is kind of strange. Basically, if you have notes in a measure, then that measure will be a part of the loop. But if you don't have loops, notes in the measure, then it's not a part of the loop. Um, it's kind of weird. A couple more cons is that I will never use any built-in sounds in this DAW. These sounds are absolutely horrible. On top of that, you can't transpose audio, and like I said before, I think this user interface just looks really, really ugly. Overall, I made a couple of beats in here, and I actually really like the step sequencer. I really also like the sampler they have in here. Um, the sampler actually has a cut itself feature in it, which is really, really handy. But overall, I think this is kind of a fun dial when you actually understand how to use it. Um, but there's just a lot of features in here that are missing, that aren't very good, and just kind of weak dial. Somehow, though, LMS isn't actually the worst dial. Um, I really think that Ohm Studio could possibly be the worst dial of all time. First of all, you can't actually export to 24-bit or WAV file, so everything is 16-bit MP3, which is actually ridiculous. Another con is that they have a really, really horrible MIDI view. Like, honestly, like, look at how small this little screen is. One, one pro is that they have pretty good built-in um, sound effects, you know, reverbs and compressors and stuff like that, but another con is that they don't really have any good MIDI instruments. Finally, there's no audio transposing, which is actually kind of ridiculous because, like, if your entire DAW is based around audio, then why can't you do any transposing? I think the only thing this DAW has going for it is because it actually has, like, kind of a public feature feature to it so you can actually like have multiple people working on the same project at the same time. By the way, this video actually took a really long time to make. If you guys are on my Discord server, you know I had a lot of technical difficulties. Um, if you like this video so far, hit the like button. It really means a lot to me. It means that you can actually appreciate the hard work I put into this one. A free DAW that I think you might be interested in is Reaper because it's actually ridiculously powerful for how like hesitant I was to get it. This is what Reaper looks like, and in my opinion, it actually looks really, really nice. Um, I think I like this color palette, even if it's kind of bland. Um, I like it gray, black, and white. It's a good color scheme. I also think this DAW is really, really easy to use. Um, I just open it up and it everything made sense to me. I, I actually really like this DAW. Down here in the bottom section, we have a good mixer. And I really like how this mixer works. I like that you have all of the um, tracks themselves, all of the faders with the tracks. You have the basic mute solo. Even you, have, you even have the panning and stuff like that. But on top of that, the coolest part that I think a lot of other DAWs should include is that you can actually see your plugins here. You do that in Cakewalk, you can do that in Waveform just fine. But there's one particular DAW that later that I'm going to show you that doesn't have this feature. And it's actually really aggravating. And now let me show you this one feature. If you double click on your audio file you can actually change the pitch on the fly and it sounds so 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 good let's listen to before obviously obviously it's clean now let's change this to like eight semitones up and hit apply there's there's only barely any artifacts at all let's try to do an octave see how the octave sounds like That is actually really, really, really impressive. Um, this, tr the auto transposing here is absolutely amazing. One, one other pro is that I heard that the Reaper is extremely customizable. Um, maybe do some research if you think that there's something that you would like to change about Reaper. Also not a big fan of the fact that if you want to look at your plugins up here and you don't want to have to open up this mixer view, you have to click on the effects button here. It takes a couple seconds to load and then you have your thing open right here. If you're, I think if you're going to add or move or quick change something on just one plugin on a certain track, it would actually like kind of waste your time and it kind of slow you down a little bit. Overall, this DAW is actually really, really good though. Okay, so this DAW right here is called a SoundBridge, and it's actually pretty impressive. I like the DAW. I also don't like the DAW. Let me explain. Okay, so it comes with a couple of built-in effects. Um, there's like a flanger here. I think the flanger is pretty nice. Um, all of the user interfaces look like this. The entire kind of DAW has one similar user interface. Also, they have this one feature. If you double clean your audio file, you can actually pull open these this like audio window here, and you can actually change the pitch. Here's the original sample. Obviously, that sounds clean. Let's change it up to like... 
10 semitones. There, there are definitely some artifacts being added in, um, but you're never going to get an absolutely perfect tra audio transpose. Another thing I liked is that if you open up the MIDI, um, I think this MIDI, like, it looks pretty nice. It's okay. It actually has some pretty interesting uh, things over here. You can make things like half as fast, twice as fast, whatever you want. You can also reverse things. You can also make things legato. This invert in particular is a, definitely a feature that I only Cakewalk has. Um, I've never really thought about any DAW using that, but it is a pretty interesting feature. Do you think of this DAW is really, really hard to work with because of all these little like knobs and buttons over here in the bottom, basically each of these little buttons down here will open up a new tab. So like this is your mixer window, that's your MIDI down there, this is your sequencer, and that's your plugins over here. Um, for example, like I don't think that you should be able to have your MIDI and your mixer open at the same time. Also, this mixer is really, really trash in my opinion. For example, this is what the narrow bands look like. On, even on the narrow bands, you don't really have any options. You have the name and the volume. Um, you can't change panning, you can't change mono and stereo and stuff like that. You hit this little plus sign over here, you can actually make these wider bands. And now all of a sudden these bands are super wide and it's just like going to waste a whole bunch of space. On top of that, you still can't see any of your plugins. If you want to see your plugins, you got to click on the track and you have to go over here. And there's so much wasted space over here too. Like why are these plugins so fat? I'm not a huge fan of the way things are laid out in this DAW. I especially also don't like how things are laid out down here. Um, why is the snap feature so small and why is this so small? Why are things so all over the place? Why can't you just leave it in one central space? I'm also not a huge fan of how you click buttons down here, be wanting to do something up here and then have to jump over here and then jump back over here. It just seems kind of like a bad layout. One free DAW that I think has an excellent um, user interface is Eggleton. Um, this DAW really, really not the knocked on the head. Like it has a lot of features in a very small amount of space. They have a lot of really good built-in instruments, um, brass, bass, guitars, mallets, pad, percussion, Percussion. They really have a whole bunch of sounds in here, and they also have just a lot of really good effects too. Um, you can, they have, you know, beat repeats, channel EQ, chorus, compressor, delay, three EQ3, erosion, redux, reverb, so many different things in here. They've also got a pretty good audio transpose. I'm not gonna really show it off here, but I do like how easy it is to just turn this little knob here. I use this drum pattern right here using their built-in sampler, and I really, really like the sampler. It's really fun and easy to work with. It's really nice. It's also really nice that they have like a drum compressor, um, transient shaper, driver, um, mid game, low game, high gain, all built into the sampler. It's actually really, really cool. And last pro, like I said, like there's everything is spread out in just the right amount of way. Um, their user interface is absolutely top notch. There are two cons to this, and actually these are pretty big cons. A lot of devices like MIDI controllers, speakers, headphones, whatever you might buy, come with a free Ableton Live Lite um, like code. Um, I got a code right here. And considering that a lot of musicians buy MIDI controllers and headphones like that, um, you might have a Ableton Live Lite software code somewhere in your house, but it's not technically free since you have to pay for something to get it. Also, just like NPC Beats, you can only have eight tracks, which is actually ridiculous. Like. I understand that Ableton wants you to upgrade to the full version. I just can't really see myself using this for anything serious. So I'm only going to use eight. Like I said before, it's not impossible to make a song with eight tracks, and it's not necessarily hard to make a song with, eight, with only eight tracks. Um, but if you are making a really, really awesome song that already has eight tracks, and then all of a sudden you just are really, really inspired to add this new instrument in, um, you have to like consolidate a whole bunch of things, and it really becomes a pain. So now let me go over some overall thoughts of how these DAWs work. If you're looking for the DAW with the best built-in sounds, um, go with NBC Beats, go with Ableton, have really, really good stock sounds and effects. And also on the same lines of sounds, um, you can always add new VSTs, you can always add new plugins. Um, so sounds is, it's not really that important. If you're looking for a DAW that's really easy just to open up and just start working and just like immediately works and everything is super easy to use at the beginning, you should go with Waveform, Soundbridge, or Ableton. If you're looking for a DAW without any limits, which I honestly really think that that should be the most important thing. If so, if you're looking for a DAW without limits, I would say that you should go with Reaper, Cakewalk, Waveform, or Soundbridge. If you're looking for the DAWs with the best audio transpose, which may or may not be important to you, um, go with Reaper, Ableton. If you're looking for a DAW with the most features, go with Cakewalk, LMMS, or MPCB. Now there's a little bit of caveat there because NBC Beats only has eight tracks, so we can't really have like the most features since it only has eight tracks, but you know what I mean. Now I'm going to go from order from the worst DAWs to the best DAWs. This is my opinion, but I really do think that these objective like things like really back this all up. I'm going to say that Ohm Studio is by far the worst, then followed by LMMS. I definitely wouldn't go with Ohm Studio. LMMS is all right simply because there's a lot of people who use LMMS, but it just has a really, really hard to work. Next, I'm actually going to have Ableton and NBC it's Beats tied um, because they're both pretty powerful DAWs, but the fact they only have eight tracks puts them pretty far down compared to the other really powerful DAWs. Next, I'm going to say Soundridge is all right, because I definitely think that you can make good stuff in Soundridge, and I think it's a good DAW, um, but some of the user interface problems just makes it kind of annoying to work with. It's not bad, but it's just kind of annoying to work with. And I'm personally going to say that Reaper and Waveform will tie for second place, and I'm going to give Cakewalk first place. 
I couldn't really decide between we Reaper and Waveform because I really think that the user interface of Reaper is amazing, but I think that the workflow of Waveform would probably suit me a little bit better. And in first place, we have Cakewalk. Cakewalk takes the cake. Um, Cakewalk really has everything you need. It has a step sequencer, has a ranging tool, has a MIDI tool, has mixer view, has a pro channel, has a really good built-in effects. Cakewalk really has everything you need. If you're willing to put in a little bit of work at the beginning to actually learn how to get drivers installed and stuff like that, get everything running together, it can really, really boost how you make your music. And I definitely recommend it to literally everyone who's looking for free, free dog. I personally make all of my YouTube videos on Cakewalk at BandLab. I'm also going to have a couple links in the description to other YouTubers who do Cakewalk stuff. I really recommend it. Download Cakewalk right now. Um, see you guys next week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Three videos a week, two live streams a week. Um, see you guys later. Woo!